Gutterman Group. Group is a go. Yes! <laughs> Not just a startup, an upstart. <sighs> Gotta get going. Gotta be good. Good? Good. Growth is the goal. How do we do that? I talked to UPS. They'll help us out. New technology, smart advice. We focus on the business, and they take care of the logistics. UPS. Good going. We get good. That's great. 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 <laughs> I love logistics. Welcome to this edition of Zips Weekly. I'm your host, David Suntup. We'll take a look back at the past week in Zips Athletics, including my conversation with Akron women's basketball head coach, Jody Kest, Akron men's basketball's run through the MAC tournament, and Akron softball's successful weekend in the Cherry Blossom Classic. We start off with our women's basketball week in review. Joined by Jody Kess to recap Akron's loss to Eastern Michigan in the third round of the MAC tournament and preview Akron's first round WNIT game at Kansas State on Thursday night. And coach, we'll start off with the Eastern Michigan game. A 95 to 66 loss. The Eagles couldn't miss from anywhere on the floor. What was the message to your team after the game? Well, they did. They, they shot the ball extremely well. We were fortunate to only be down by 11 and a half. I thought there's no way they can shoot the ball that well in the second half, and, and they did. And uh, give them credit. They've been playing extremely well. They're playing for a purpose. Um, and, uh, you know, then there were some things we could have done differently and better. So uh, it wasn't just all about them. Uh, but uh, it's over with now, and uh, we're very fortunate to be chosen to represent the MAC and the WNIT, and uh, we're going to be very excited about that. What were some of the things that you alluded to that your squad could have done better? Uh, we could have defended better. I, I think, uh, you know, too many times we left the high post area. I thought, uh, you know, our shot selection could have been better. We could have taken care of the ball a little bit better. So there was a lot of things that was on us. But, uh, but, but boy, they did shoot the ball extremely well. Kansas State is your opponent in the first round of the W1IT, 18 and 13 overall, 7 and 11 in the Big 12. What was your initial reaction when the bracket came out and you saw that you'd be playing Kansas State in Manhattan, Kansas? Well, I'm just happy to be in the tournament and playing whomever. We have a lot of respect for Kansas State and their program. Their head coach does a phenomenal job there. He's very successful uh, when I was in Texas at TCU. Uh, they're in a great conference. We're playing at their home facility, which they average, over, I think, over 5,000 people. So we're just going to do what we do best, and we're going to go out there, and the kids are going to work hard. We're going to have fun and hopefully represent the uh, MAC. Brianna Lewis is averaging more than three blocks a game, good for 12th in the nation. What's going to be the key when you're on offense going up against her? Uh, go away from her. <laughs> she is a phenomenal athlete, and uh, it's just not about her. They have other athletes that can shoot the three. Very athletic team. They like to, to run a lot of zone defense. Um, so there's some challenges for us, but uh, you know we have two days to get ready, and uh, you know we'll be ready in, on Thursday. Well, Coach, best of luck on Thursday in the first round of the WNIT. Thank you. Akron men's basketball started off the MAC tournament with an opening round game against Northern Illinois, looking to advance to the second round in Cleveland with a win. The Zips clobbered Northern Illinois 76 to 52 in the opening round of the MAC tournament back on March 9th. Akron was on fire from the beginning after starting the game on a 33 to 6 run. The Zips hit a barrage of shots from downtown after going 14 of 30 from beyond the arc. DG EB Tayo scored a game high 18 points while Reggie McAdams chipped in 15 points. Akron moved to 19 and 13 with the win and advance to the second round of the MAC tournament in Cleveland. Akron took down Western Michigan 58 to 45 in the second round of the MAC tournament. Reggie McAdams led the offensive charge off the bench after scoring 15 points, and Kawan Cheatham posted a double double with 11 points and 10 rebounds. Antono Jackson provided a spark at point guard after scoring eight of his 10 points in the second half. The victory put the Zips at 20 and 13, the 10th straight year Akron has reached the 20 win plateau and also helped the Zips advance to the third round of the MAC tournament. Terrific effort by our guys especially at the defensive end. 
to hold a team that uh, I think they shoot about 45%, 46% from the field to 25-9. Uh, and then uh, we knew the game was going to be won or lost at the three-point line. We knew they came in averaging seven and a half threes a game, and we held them to two. And those were early. We made mistakes on both of them. So that's the kind of effort we have to have to win. Akron held off Kent State in a thriller 53-51 in the third round of the MAC tournament. The Golden Flashes had a chance to tie or win the game with 7.9 seconds left, but the Zips defense didn't allow Kent State to get a shot off before time expired. DG Ibitayo knocked down a pair of free throws to give Akron the lead with 38 seconds to play. Pat Forsyth made a big impact off the bench after scoring 12 points in just 13 minutes. The Zips improved to 21-13 with the win and moved on to the MAC tournament semifinals. Well, it was a, it was a grinded out, typical akron Kent game. A little less scoring than most, but... Uh, we did what we had to do to win, really. We, we can't afford to play in the 70s with them. We need to play it down in here. I just wish we would have shot it a little bit better, but neither team really shot the ball very well, but it was a good ball game, <clears throat> exciting game. Akron's MAC tournament run ended with a 68-59 loss to Buffalo in the semifinals. The Zips had trouble containing Buffalo inside after allowing the Bulls to score 34 points in the paint and 20 second chance points. The game was tied at 49 with under 6 minutes to play, but the Zips couldn't make enough plays down the stretch to pull out the win. Jake Kretzer led the way with 12 points, with 10 of them coming in the first half. Akron wraps up the season 21-14 after the Zips decided not to accept an invitation to a postseason tournament. I mean, we played with good heart. We just didn't play good enough to win. That's really what it came down to. We, you know, we played good enough defensively, but we didn't, we didn't rebound the ball well enough. We didn't, we, we didn't do enough offensively really to win. But... It's unfortunate we were right there to win. We just didn't make enough plays. Akron baseball lost two out of three games at Davidson in its final non-conference series of the season. John Valick III picked up the win in the opener after allowing just one run in six innings. Here's what the junior had to say about his performance and how the team played this weekend. The big important thing for me um, is getting ahead, you know, early in the count. Um, the big thing with me on Friday, or actually Saturday, was I was able to um, locate my fastball early in the count. And if I'm able to do that, that sets up, you know, all my off-speed pitches, which helps keep them off balance and, you know, turned in a good outing. So, like I said, the big thing was getting ahead, you know, me falling behind, you know, doesn't usually turn into success. Um, you know, it was just big for me, you know, it bugs me to let my team down like I did the last two outings, or at least it feels like I did. And, um, you know, coming into the next game, I just wanted to give my team a chance to win and, you know, throw the way I know I'm capable of. So it was important to bounce back, you know, regain my confidence and, you know, push forward, you know, starting MAC play. Akron softball won the Cherry Blossom Classic after winning all four of its games this weekend. Second baseman Kelly Routabush made a big impact at the plate after hitting 500 and knocking in two runs. Here's what the senior had to say about her hitting and the team's performance this weekend. I think that I was more mentally there. I wasn't thinking as much like I normally do. And I got a lot of extra hitting in this week, a lot of T-work, which gives me, gives me a lot more confidence going into the games as well as um, doing a little bit of visualization before the games the night before. Seeing my success at the plate, I think that always helps me as an individual and having confidence at the plate. I think that we brought everything together. We brought our hitting together, our defense, and our pitching. And even if we did have an air here or there, we were able to pick up from it and not let it affect the whole game. Um, so I think more of our success came from just putting all three categories together in order to pick up some runs. And uh, Aaron did well in the circle, and our defense played well behind her. Sean Barber won his second straight NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championship after his vault of 19 feet and four and three quarter inches. The junior broke his own collegiate record and also set a new NCAA championship record. 
Clayton Murphy finished in third place in the finals of the men's 800 meter run in a school record time of just more than 1 minute and 47 seconds, the seventh fastest time in the nation this season. Murphy's performance helped him earn first team All-America honors. Brittany Funk received first team All-America honors after finishing in fifth place in the women's weight throw, while Claudia Garcia Jow broke the school record for the high jump with her jump of six feet and two and three quarter inches. The senior was named an All-American after finishing in second place. Akron Women's Golf finished tied for 10th place in the Rio Verde Invitational out in Arizona. Laura Murray came in a tie for 10th place after finishing the weekend 8 over par, while Sierra Everson had a career low round of 73 on Saturday. Akron Men's Golf came in 14th place in the Tallis Park Challenge. Ryan Harris ended play in a tie for 28th place after shooting four over par in the tournament. The Zips are back on the course to compete in the Furman Intercollegiate in Greenville, South Carolina the weekend of March 27th. Junior Matt Chesham shot a 589 to finish in 25th place in the NCAA Rifle Championship in Fairbanks, Alaska. Four Akron women's basketball players received honors from the MAC. Senior Sinna King was named the MAC Player of the Year and an All-MAC First Team selection after leading the conference with averages of more than 20 points and 9 rebounds a game. King is just the second Zips player in program history to receive the MAC Player of the Year award. Forward Anita Brown was picked as an All-MAC Second Team selection, while sophomore Hannah Plybin was named to the All-MAC Third Team. Point guard Kerry McMahon was selected to the All-MAC Freshman Team. Two Akron men's basketball players received honors from the MAC. Junior center Pat Forsyth made the All-MAC third team, while point guard Noah Robotham was chosen for the All-MAC freshman team after averaging more than nine points and three assists a game. Our ZIP Student Athlete of the Week is Sean Barber. The junior won his second straight NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championship after his vault of 19 feet and four and three quarter inches. The winning vault broke his own collegiate record and also set a new NCAA championship record. Coming up this week in Zips Athletics, Akron women's basketball plays at Kansas State in the first round of the WNIT on Thursday. Akron Tennis starts off MAC play against Eastern Michigan on Friday. That wraps up this edition of Zips Weekly. We hope you all have a great spring break and our next show will be posted the week of March 30th. Thanks so much for watching. I'm David Suntup for GoZips.com.